Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today I am talking with Scott Kirkland. He is the co-founder and executive director of MVision. ASX code is EMV. Now, just made an announcement, which is really a game changer for the company. But before we get started on that, Scott, brief overview for those that may not know who are MVision. Hi, Kerry. Well, th thanks for having me today. So MVision is again. developing... Thank you. Envision is developing um, novel imaging products. So we have two generations of a portable brain scanner under development. Uh, our first gen is designed for in-hospital use. Think a bit like ultrasound for the brain by the bedside, ICUs, stroke wards, emergency departments at smaller hospitals. Uh, and then a second gen ultra lightweight helmet designed for road and air ambulance use. And uh, we're aiming to deploy our device for rapid stroke diagnosis and monitoring. Which is fantastic in itself. Now, when we last spoke, we spoke about the device itself. It was not cumbersome so, so much to speak, but it, it was doing the job, but it did take up a bit of space. Now you've done a deal today, which is exclusive to MVision, which is a game changer because it makes the, the device smaller. It makes the data more uh, robust and I guess, uh, I'm not sure if I can say this, but it could potentially knock any competition out of the park. So what's the deal and why is it such a game changer for Envision? So we've, we've inked a strategic uh, OEM supply agreement with Keysight Technologies. So Keysight are a circa $26 billion multinational and they're one of the leaders in microwave measurement, particularly in 5G. Uh, aero communication sector, and they have made a strategic investment to get uh, their product line into the healthcare space, specifically uh, EM imaging, which is what, what we're doing. So uh, their, their component, the VNA, is in many ways one of the largest components of our device, and it's the brains of our system. Okay. So it allows us to accurately measure the signals that are sent in our headset. And that's really important for the quality of imaging, the functionality of our device, and what's happened is we've been able to go from a large trolley version of this VNA to miniaturized series of boards that can now live in our headset. Wow. So you can think of the brains in the headset, the eyes, the antennas are in the head, all the key architecture is in our headset. And we've secured exclusivity around the fast sweep version of this VNA, which yeah, we, we believe will give us a, a serious edge on, on any competitors. Uh, so I love that serious edge on competitors. Now, Keysight Technologies and Envision, how did that marriage come about? Have you been looking to miniaturize the device? Was that an important component going forward? A absolutely. Smaller, lower, lower component count, um, it's more cost effective. You know, obviously we want to, to maximize margins in, in, in our commercial unit. It's very important. We, we began our relationship really back in April 2019 when we signed an MOU with Keysight, we, they're a US-based company, but they're, a lot of their manufacturing is out of Malaysia. We visited the facility there, spent um, some time with senior management and, and into that deal to really work with them, collaborate and, and take this off-the-shelf VNA and develop a bespoke, customized VNA designed to our specs, obviously funded by Keysight, but designed to our specs uh, for our use case. And now, you know, fast forward, we're, we're really excited a few years later to, to enter into this agreement. So with Keysight, uh, when you enter into the agreement, so they supply the component, there's a cost element to that. Is that cost element less than what, uh, what you had prior to it? In other words, what I'm looking for is um, from rolling Preferential this... Preferential pricing or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah nat 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 naturally part of the agreement, yeah. And so going forward, will they continue to uh, develop the device or is the device all up to speed, ready to go, ready for commercialization. I'm just, whereabouts are you, I guess, yeah. in the process? They're always innovating. So in a fairly short span, in a couple of years, they've been able to dramatically reduce the size of this VNA and still keep that really high level of performance. So I would not be surprised 12 months down the, down the track, we get an even smaller unit, uh, lower component count, but, uh, but high performance. So, you know, the relationship is ongoing, but we've really locked in the supply for that miniaturized VNA. So Scott, it is quite a substantial um, change to the way you're going about things. Talk to my investor audience out there about the news flow going forward. What are the next steps, the clinical trial process? What's the process going forward for this? 
Sure, sure. So I think last time we chatted, we, we were at the, the back end of our pilot clinical study, which was yep. really a, a proof of concept that was with a, a clinical prototype. Uh, and we had, a, you know, really encouraging outcomes out of that study. Uh, we're now about to embark on a much larger multi-center study. Uh, we're looking at up to 300 patients, acute stroke and, and suspected stroke patients uh, across up to four sites between uh, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales. Uh, and there's two elements to that study. There's a pre-validation and then there's a sensitivity specificity validation element. And, and, and at the end of that process, we're expecting to go to the regulatory bodies, the TGA, uh, FDA, CMARC, to, to seek our clearances to begin selling the device. So it's a really transformational period for the companies. You know, what, what we like to say where the rubber hits the road uh, with these much larger studies with a device that has been designed for manufacture and commercialization. Uh, that's our first gen um, brain scanner. Talk to me about or talk to us about um, strategic partners going forward. Is that an important part of the process as you as you move into the commercialization and dare I say it revenue down the road? Uh, do you need strategic partners for that sort of, I guess, the distribution and the marketing of it? Yeah, I, I, I mean, we, we, we can always sell direct. We can work with distributors. Uh, ultimately, it depends on the margin back to the back to the company in that particular region and, and, and the opportunity. Uh, one thing I can say is we have got a formal relationship with uh, GE Healthcare through a Commonwealth CRC program and then informal relationships with, with all the other majors as well as uh, medical device um, manufacturers that, that have a key focus in, in stroke care. Uh, and every, every group that we spend time with uh, is in agreement that this is a significant unmet need that we're targeting. They, so they really uh, understand the value proposition of our device. So we believe there's strong appetite uh, if we want to go down the distribution path to, to sell our product in, in those major markets. Um, in the past, um, I'm just curious, this has just come to me, uh, they have to use an MRI scanner, don't they, to, to, to scan the brain for all those, sort of, which is, they're yeah. huge. Yeah, that, they are huge. Uh, the images are excellent, but, but they are huge. The, the workhorse in stroke is really CT. So it's interesting. MRI images, typically uh, high, higher resolution than CT, uh, better accuracy, but CT is cheaper than MR, it's faster, it's more, it's more accessible. So it's the workhorse in stroke. It's, it's okay. the first port of call in, in ED. But CT itself, still very large, ionizing radiation, really not, there's nothing accessible at the bedside or, or widely available in the, in the ambulance that can image the brain at the point of care. So that's really our, our, our target market, bringing it to the patient, integra integrating into the care pathway in the bedside, ICU, stroke wards, monitoring patients' response to treatment, uh, and then delivering that pre-hospital care uh, in the golden hour in the back of the ambulance uh, downstream. Really interesting. One of the things I, I want to ask you is, because you said before exclusivity, my little ears pricked up at that. Does that mean that no one else will have a device which is as small, like let's talk competition, because it's a big market, like this is a big market. And if EM Vision are the go-to helmet person, if you like, uh, is that market is potentially huge. Can anyone play catch up? It is a big market. Uh, you know, in the US alone, across those ICU stroke wards, we're looking at over 10,000 units for our first gen device. And, it, and for our second gen ambulance model, we're looking at about 50,000. So that's just the US. It's, it's a multi-billion dollar yeah. opportunity. Uh, you, you're always going to have competitive, there's going to be competitors in a market of that size. And, and there's different types of competition. There's legacy, CT, MR. Yep. There's even inertia, changing practices, competition, but then there's more mobile um, variants trying to develop principles similar to us. Now, they don't have this DNA deal that we have, but we also, through the hardware design and some of the smarts and the algorithms out of the University of Queensland, the ability to create, create high quality images with a device that's very small, very mobile, can be brought to the bedside. Um, you know, our competitors really have much larger devices or those that have smaller are not creating high quality images right. that can localize a stroke or differentiate the type of stroke. So well, once again, we Aussies and technology, we just smash it out of the park, don't we? So we Scott, certainly punch above our weight. That's yeah, that's we sure. punch above our weight. So quickly, if you could, what do you think the timeline is? Uh, and look, I don't want to uh, hold you solely to it. So give me a sort of a a longer term one, if you like, the sort of the commercialization and, and revenue going down further down. 
Sure. So I talked about those largest larger studies that we're anticipating to start next quarter. Uh, all, all, all going to plan. We we, we could be selling units uh, late twenty three, early early twenty four. Of course, um, there's a pro regulatory process to go through. Absolutely. Um, but there is no reason why, if we choose to work with distributors, that we couldn't have those relationships uh, set up in advance of, of regulatory clearance, and so, so subject to the to the outcomes there. I guess that's what I wanted to get to. What uh, We're getting to the pointy end. It's not 10 years down the track. These things do take time, but you've done all the hard work. We are getting to the pointy end. Running out of time, Scott. Absolutely. Everyone knows what I'm like. Uh, three reasons why right now, because your share price has been strong. Why do you think now is a good time for our community to sit up and take notice? So clinical trials, much larger clinical trials are a major catalyst. So obviously positive data out of those studies. Uh, what we can do on the back of those studies in terms of partnerships, relationships with, with, with some of the larger imaging companies, uh, as well as the regulatory process, FDA uh, and updates around that process. That's, that's, that's key on the clin clinical front. I, I think on the use case, every, you know, over the last two, two three years, I, we've spoken with over 50, 60 different healthcare professionals in stroke, neurologists, radiologists, nurses. They, their enthusiasm levels are unlike anything anyone has seen before in many ways. They're, they're always coming up with a new way that the technology can add value. And, you know, they tell us stories about a stroke patient has a stroke, they can't use, you know, complete paralysis on one side of their body, can't use their arm, they get treated, 15 minutes later, the symptoms have resolved, they've got complete use back. You know, it's, it, it, it's transformational. There's the, the idea that we can use this technology to improve outcomes, in rural regional areas, but also in hospitals, and then take take that footprint that we've developed locally and, and go global. Um, you know, the positive impact impact we can have with the technology is really tremendous. So, lots of milestones coming up, but also I think you know the 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 ability to really solve a significant health economic burden is is what holds us in great stead moving forward. Well, congratulations on the Keysight technology deal. It is transformational, I think, for the company. Thanks so much for joining me on Small Caps today, Scott Kirkland, co-founder and executive director of EM Vision ASX Code. EMV, check them out on the website, but this is a, a big deal with Keysight today. Thanks so much for joining me. Pleasure. Thanks, Gary.